It's been over three months since we've seen a market correction. And as many traders and investors like you and I would know, that's statistically improbable. But have we seen signs of Wall Street actually looking to take some profit? The charts may be suggesting that yes, and the reason why has to do with the hottest markets right now around the world starting to weaken across the board. Today, we'll talk about the opportunities in stocks, commodities, and cryptos right now, and of course, the signs that we'll need to be wary of for the week ahead. Welcome back, everyone, to the special weekend edition of the Markets Around the World. My name is K2. Remember to subscribe and smash that bell icon if you love markets, and boy oh boy, do we have a massive show coming up for you. Remember to put in the comments down below your favorite instrument that you're trading or investing in right now. The CPI and PPI reports both came in hotter than expected for the second month in a row. Sticky inflation could delay the anticipated rate cuts, regardless of market expectations. The House passed a bill this week that would ban TikTok in the United States. Boeing is now the second worst performer in the S&P 500 year to date, only behind Tesla. And all of this happened last week, seemingly with the market not caring. However, after the results, the market for the Quad Witch event went down almost 1%. I have some data ready for you guys to show. We begin with, this data shows that the monetary base is increasing, despite one of the most restrictive monetary policies in history. What should one expect in a recession? We probably all know the answer to that. It's imperative to own hard assets in my view. The next data I want to show you guys is, everyone expects higher home prices because everyone believes the government and the Fed will intervene to keep home prices high. Haven't they been trained to expect that? The Fed still holds 87% of its peak level of MBS assets on its balance sheets, 15 plus years after the GFC. Agricultural commodities have just surged above the Russian invasion levels, reaching near decade highs. This surge is expected to have significant implications for inflation in the global economy, potentially driving food prices substantially higher. It's worth noting the strong link between agricultural commodities and the Equal Weighted Commodities Index, indicating that other natural resource prices are likely to follow a similar upward trajectory. The war on rising consumer prices is likely far from over, and a potential policy shift by the Fed should only add fuel to the inflation fire. There is a reason why gold recently spiked to record levels, and in my view, this move is just the beginning. With every passing month, Goldman slashes one rate cut. It now sees just three cuts in 2024 versus four before it originally expected the first one in March before three revisions since. This is the FOMC preview on Wednesday. Powell is going to talk and it's going to be a key event for the market. Inflation has been firmer in recent months, but we think it is still on track to fall enough by the June FOMC meeting for a first cut. This has become less obvious though, and our inflation path for the rest of the year is now in a range where small surprises could have large consequences. We now expect three cuts in 2024, verse 4 previously, mainly because of the slightly higher inflation path. We continue to expect four cuts in 2025 and now expect one final cut in 2026 to an unchanged terminal rate forecast of 3.25, 3.5%. Our probability-weighted Fed forecast is similar to both our baseline scenario and market pricing in 2024, but somewhat lower than both at a 2025 horizon. We suspect that the Fed leadership is also still targeting a first cut in June. And this combined with a default pace of one cut per quarter implies that the most natural outcome for the median dot is to remain unchanged at three cuts or 4.625% for 2024. We expect the median dots to remain unchanged at 3.625% for 2025 and 2.875% 2 for 2026 as well. We expect the longer run dots to gradually drift higher over time, with a small tick up a bit more likely than not this week. The only significant change to the economic forecasts should be an increase in 2024 GDP growth. The main risk is that FOMC participants might instead be more concerned about the recent inflation data and less convinced that inflation will resume its earlier soft trend. In that case, they might bump up their 2024 core PCE inflation forecast to 2.5% and show a two-cut median. The FOMC will also begin a formal discussion of slowing the pace of balance sheet runoff this week, 
but details will likely be left to the minutes. We expect the committee to slow the pace of Treasury runoff from $60 billion to $30 billion per month after its May meeting, and to then continue through 2015Q1, at which point the seizure of the balance sheet should be about $6.7 trillion or 23% of GDP. And these are all the earnings we have for this week. I'm interested in some of them. If you want to take a screenshot, pause the video, and you can use it later on. Now let's look at some charts. We'll start with the SPY 4-hour chart. If the price manages to go above 512 and stay above that level, we will most likely see a new high or a retest. If Monday and Tuesday are red days, the market could find a bottom on Wednesday. However, if Monday and Tuesday are green, we may see a sell-off and bears could gain control until Friday. In that scenario, the price is likely to fill the gap at 496. Next chart, BA closed the week at 182.53. We're waiting to see what happens at the 179.80 area. If the price bounces off this support and continues to hold it, we are looking for BA to move up to the 190 price level. If we break below the 179.180 area, we'll take profit at the next support level around 171.25. The one and only Tesla closed the week at 163.57. We're keeping an eye on the 160 level. If the price can hold 160 as support, we believe the price will test resistance at 174. If the price cannot hold the 160 support level, we'll take profit at the next support around the 145 area. And the last chart, AMD closed the week at 191.06. The price bounced strongly off the 185 support level. If this bullish price action continues, we'll take profit at the 203.75-204 price area. If bears take over and break the 185 support level, we'll hold down to the 168.25 price area, where there was solid consolidation. All right, let's wrap up this video. Here are the key events for this week. On Tuesday, NVIDIA will be hosting their GTC 2024 event. Moving on to Wednesday, we have the highly anticipated Federal Reserve policy decision, along with a press conference from Fed Chair Jerome Powell. Additionally, Micron will also be reporting their earnings on Wednesday. Thursday is packed with events, including the IPO of Reddit, the release of initial jobless claims, services and manufacturing PMI data, and existing home sales figures. Moreover, both Nike and FedEx will be reporting their earnings on Thursday. If you found value in this video, please remember to subscribe and like. If you have any questions regarding the market, feel free to leave a comment and I will get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you for watching and I'll see you later. Bye for now.